Hello, good afternoon. My name is Debbie Jacobs, and I wanted to do a live today. You know, let me tell you something. Debbie Jacobs is on it. You know, I'm going to try and do my best to get an important message out to people um, that, you know, we can, uh, you know, change things about ourselves, our own behaviors that don't work for us. You know, we end up with a lot of flaws from childhood and they stem from parenting mistakes and they actually you know parenting mistakes create emotional wounds right and from our wounds stem our flaws uh, and basically you know we live with these flaws and that's the way that we perpetuate our own uh, unhappiness and upset right if i'm uh, you know in my anger problems who is that upsetting that's upsetting me. If I'm feeling insecure, who is that affecting? That's affecting me. You know, if I'm feeling shy and sensitive and full of self-doubt or anxiety or I'm afraid to talk to somebody, that all negatively affects me. I don't want that. I want I want my freedom and happiness. I want to be able to feel good about myself in every situation, uh, you know, in, in every uh, instance of my life. And let me tell you something. We really have to be equipped with effective coping skills, not all these flaws. So instead of me getting angry at someone, how can I handle that situation that doesn't create upset for me, right? Uh, you know, uh, how can I feel confident when I'm around strangers instead of feeling insecure, you know? Uh, you know, how can I feel confident instead of, uh, you know, feeling anxious? Let me tell you something. That's, you know, you'll have to take on your flaws. You have to figure out new ways of being that's going to help you, you know, in your happiness and create positive outcomes and serve your highest good. You know, because it's not serving your highest good if you're perpetuating jealousy, if you're perpetuating, uh, you know, guilt or shame. You know, we shouldn't, we're taught to feel bad about ourselves and that, uh, you know, is, is a parenting mistake. We don't have to feel bad about ourselves if we do something wrong. You know, we don't have to hold our head in shame for being human. We have to learn how to accept ourselves. Uh, you know, and let me tell you something. Everybody thinks, oh, yeah, I already I accept myself. I, uh, I love myself. And then they turn around, something goes wrong, and they start beating themselves up. That's not self-acceptance and that's not self-love. You know, self-love is loving yourself in every single way. Not being turned against yourself. You know, insecurity is not self-love, right? Because you're actually, uh, you know, um, perpetuating that you're not good enough. You don't feel good about yourself. That's why you have insecurity. So if you don't feel good about yourself, how can that be self-love? It's not, you know? And that's, the, and that's, you know, you have that because you don't have the self-love and you don't know how to handle the situation, uh, supporting yourself, not being turned against yourself. Our flaws, uh, you know, don't help us in our happiness and they actually perpetuate, uh, you know, uncertainty, feeling uncomfortable, uh, unhappiness and upset. And, you know, that is something that is the target. Just isolate our reactionary behaviors. That's it. That's the only thing that you have to focus on and transform. So, you know, I mean, I've always been organized. I have a good work ethic. I had, um, you know, I was, I'm a nice person except for my flaws, right? So I don't have to work on all that stuff because that stuff's not the problem. The problem was when I got angry, when I felt insecure, when I felt shy, that was the problem and that's what I addressed and now I post these videos and I put out you know to people to do the same your your happiness and your quality of life is worth it don't sell yourself short you know work on yourself so that you have 
you know, the freedom and happiness uh, and not go your whole life to your grave in your flaws, perpetuating unhappiness, uh, you know, and upset. And it's all the reactionary behaviors. It all stems from, uh, you know, when things don't go our way. And it also, uh, you know, directly, uh, you know, is where you need to cultivate self-control. So, and in the process of cultivating self-control, guess what? We, uh, you know, we take back our power. So this whole work is win-win. It is... Across the board, it's going to you know, benefit you and your life and your relationships with your children. You know, because when we have flaws, we pass them down to kids. And we think it's hereditary or it's in the genes or, you know, uh, it's biological. Why would self-sabotage be biological? Why would I have a gene that tells me that I should, be, that I should sabotage myself? Does that make any sense? Why would I have a gene that, uh, you know, is an inner critic? You know, we really have not, uh, um, you know, examined our own behaviors. People have trust issues. People have abandonment issues. These are your flaws. They are parenting mistakes. You know, my father never taught me that I should not trust people. I mean, if he did, it would be from, from his own trust uh, trust issues. But he didn't teach me to have trust issues. His goal was not for me to have trust issues, right? What parent would want that? Or abandonment issues? Or an, an inferiority complex? Are we not paying attention to what's going on? I mean, really. People-pleasing behavior. Why would we have a people-pleasing behavior that doesn't serve us? Or shyness that, you know, the, uh, we have behaviors that we actually need to get rid of, you know, uh, you know in, in our adult self. Well, they should have never been there. We should have never uh, ingrained them into the foundation of our being. And now adults are stuck with them to their grave unless they heal, you know, their flaws uh, and replaced with effective ways of being, uh, which is that, and that's the way that it's meant to be, our authentic self. And um, basically, you know, I put information out here to to spread the word, you know, for people to, to don't hesitate to, to, you know, start to cultivate uh, effective ways of being, coping skills, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the necessary thinking, you know, to serve your highest good. Make sure your your communication skills are, are, are uh, you know, um, uh, suit your needs for every, uh, you know, time that you want to express yourself. And you want to express yourself effectively, not, you know, trying to say, oh, well, I have a problem and you're an asshole. You know, I have a problem with you, and what I say and what I express to you is you're an asshole. That doesn't, that doesn't help to identify what the problem is. That's not effective communication, and it can lead to a fight. You know, that's not, that's not the goal. The goal is to solve a problem, right? And a lot of these skills, these effective, uh, you know, skills are problem-solving skills. They really are. Uh, and they also stem from, um, you know, like, like if you have a problem, don't get angry about it. Just solve it. If you have a problem, express yourself, you know, don't, don't have anxiety over it, solve it. What, what is creating anxiety in you, uh, that you can't, uh, you know, express yourself and effectively handle the situation. Got to start speaking up, you know, to start diffusing problems, uh, that are only negatively affecting you, you know? So, so I wanted to do a video really to encourage people, um, to take themselves on. If you don't like it, don't do it anymore. You know, I did not like my anger problems. I didn't. And I actually lived, you know, most of my life in in my pain and in my anger problems and in my insecurity and shyness. I mean, I was in my 30s, uh, you know, and still being shy around people. That's a problem. And let me tell you something. Shyness is a fucking prison, man. I did not like shyness. I did not like insecurity. I did, did not like uh, anxiety. I did not like my anger problems. You know, I didn't like my my uh, abandonment issues. I definitely didn't like my my inferiority complex. 
And guess what? That made me not like myself. But we need to love ourselves, right? So we have to change everything about ourselves that doesn't support us in our happiness and make us feel good about ourselves, right? That's our flaws. That's it. That is our flaws. And it really stops us from living. It could stop us from love. It stops us from happiness, right? You know, a lot of people are too shy to socialize and they, you know, struggle finding love and cultivating successful relationships. You know, people don't make it to marriage. People don't have families. People don't, you know, it negatively affects the quality of uh, their lives. And they don't know better to address it. They think, oh, well, this was the hand that I was dealt and, and I am who I am. But you're actually not who you are because who you are is your healed version of self. Positive thoughts, positive effective coping skills, and healthy self-esteem. And we are living in our flaws, our unhealed pain. And that is our negative thoughts, negative ineffective coping skills, and low self-esteem. And for me, I, you know, I, I mean, I had, my, my, my flaws were so overwhelming to my experience that I ended up uh, in mental illness with depression, anxiety, and bipolar. So what that means is that my flaws, uh, you know, um, perpetuated so much unhappiness in my life that I ended up, uh, you know, uh, living in mental illness. And I assert that mental illness is the sum of our flaws. And I didn't have my personal power because I was the youngest of a family of five uh, who was, you know, fighting for my own, uh, you know, fighting my own way, right, in the family, fighting for my own voice and my own position. And guess what? You know, a child cannot be in an abusive relationship, you know, uh, and my 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 father was abusive, and then I had another layer of abuse coming from my siblings. They didn't know; they had no idea. They were kids too. My dad didn't know. My dad thought he was doing the right thing. You know, my dad wanted nothing but our happiness, and he had a ton of love. You know, he and, and let me tell you something. I really speak, uh, you know, to this uh, because I know that my dad had a lot of guilt when he was older. When we were all, uh, you know, grown up and, and now his two of his daughters, you know, have uh, mental illness problems and uh, the family is in, it's fighting and nobody's, you know, all my dad wanted for was for us to be happy, uh, you know, and to be close. You know, a and uh, that, that, you know, that, that didn't happen. He undermined his own success. He actually sabotaged his own success. Because you don't create happy children, you know, uh, through, the, through the vehicle of punishment. You create, you know, negativity and hurt. And if you create enough negativity and hurt, you can create mental illness. So this really stems from our flaws. And my dad never fixed his flaws. He had negative thinking, negative ineffective coping skills, and low self-esteem. And people think, oh, well, you know, I can be a negative thinker and I, I have healthy self-esteem. No, you don't, because negative thinking actually is, is what, uh, you know, uh, is what sabotages your, your healthy self-esteem. If you had, you need to have positive thoughts to have healthy self-esteem. And that doesn't mean that, uh, and no flaws. You need to have effective ways to maintain your happiness. That's how you accomplish uh, healthy self-esteem. So basically, you know, I wanted to, to do this video because I really have, I have been thinking, this has been my work for almost 10 years. Can you believe that? I did my own healing process from 2010 to 2015. And then when I finished, I really started thinking, how can I, uh, you know, uh, share this information with other people uh, and put it out there? So I, I, I actually thought three years to cultivate, you know, uh, a process 
And, and you know what? Let me tell you something. I still think about it because I still want to simplify and, and consolidate and make it so, so, you know, clear to people that this is what it takes. It just takes fixing your flaws and, and, and your, you know, re, uh, gaining self-control over your reactionary behaviors. That's not easy to do, but that, that is the path. That's what you have to focus on. Don't focus on crystals or Reiki or chakras. Like, just focus on your own freaking behaviors, you know, and the reactionary ones, uh, you know, and then to develop positive ways of being. Compassion, empathy, sympathy, forgiveness, understanding, patience, you know. That's the way that you want to operate. That maintains your uh, you know, your happiness, not operating in fear, worry, anxiety, anger, insecurity, guilt, shame, right? Do you see? Do you see the difference, right? So anyway, all right, my name is Debbie Jacobs. I hope everybody has a great day, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.